Hello students, I welcome you to EPG Partial. My name is Dr. Shiv Kumar Sood. I am senior scientist in the Division of Animal Biochemistry at National Dairy Research Institute that is NDRI Karnal in Haryana, India. Today I am going to talk about modeling biochemical pathways from the paper Biostatistics and Bioinformatics. Dear students, biochemistry is the study of enzyme catalyzed reactions where an enzyme converts a substrate into a product. Product of the first reaction may act as substrate for the second enzyme catalyzed reaction. Therefore, if this happens, then the reactions are taken forward. Sometimes product of the first enzyme catalyzed reaction may also bind to the same enzyme, first enzyme and convert it back to the substrate. So in this way, the reactions, enzyme catalyzed reactions become reversible. In addition, the product of the second enzyme catalyzed reaction may act as a substrate for the third enzyme catalyzed reaction. In this way, what happens? product of one enzyme catalyzed reaction may act as a substrate of the another next enzyme and in this way all the substrates and products they are chained together, chained together to form what we call biochemical or metabolic pathways. In these pathways these reactions are arranged in series starting from the beginning first reaction to the final end reaction. In consequently, metabolic pathway may be defined as a series of enzyme catalyzed reaction where we have the starting initial substrate and then ending the pathway with the final end product. The rate of turnover of these substrates and products which taken together are collectively known as metabolites are called flux that is a metabolic flux, that is the rate of turnover of these metabolites in a metabolic pathway is called flux or simply metabolic flux. In addition, the end product of one pathway may enter into another pathway through a linking reaction. Therefore, with the results, all the pathways within the cell may form a network, a network of interconnected pathways which we collectively call as biochemical processes. For example, some pathways may form a network to generate energy. For example, glycolysis connects to TCA cycle for generation of energy through oxidative phosphorylation. So this is a biochemical process for the energy, meeting the energy requirements. Conversely, for example, let us say that uh, there is sufficient uh, uh, carbon skeleton available from the presence of amino acids as a source of the energy as well as for the growth. In that case, carbon skeleton which ends in the pyruvate can be converted back to glucose 6-phosphate through gluconeogenesis, which then enters into the fast pentose phosphate shunt for synthesis of the NADPH as well as the biosynthetic precursors. Therefore, this process meets the requirements for the growth. So, we have seen the energy meeting requirements, biochemical process, growth meeting requirements of the biochemical process so that after growth the cell is able to divide. Sometimes there may be signals that instead of cell division, certain pathways are initiated so that this cell becomes a dormant cell. For example, a bacteria becomes dormant to form a spore. So these are collectively biochemical processes. I mean, we have bi biochemical pathways which are a series of chemical reactions catalyzed by enzymes. Then the pathways connected or interconnected together to form what we call network of pathways 
given the name of a biochemical process to meet either energy requirement or growth for division. The information about the enzyme catalyzed reaction is collected through on bench experiments. And all this information regarding the kinetic parameters as well as the concentration of the species in the enzyme catalyzed reaction, for example, the concentration of the enzyme used or the substrate and the product produced, all this information is collected through on bench experiments and is published in the research journals. Curators of reaction kinetic databases at SEBURK, which we have seen in the last uh, module, as well as Brenda reaction kinetics database, the information about kinetic parameter values is connected, is collected from the literature and is stored in the database. The information about the parameter values like uh, kinetic parameters k, cat, k, m, v, max, etc. as well as the rate law that is the model, the mathematical model can be downloaded and can be used for simulating an enzyme catalyzed reaction. Since the biochemical or the metabolic pathway is a series of enzyme catalyzed reaction, we can collect the information or download or gather the information for all the enzyme catalyzed reactions and enter into a simulation software to model what we call a model of a pathway. So in this way, we can <coughs> collect the information about all the constituent enzymes of a pathway and then model the complete pathway. If, for example, let us say that some information is missing. Say in glycolysis, we say that, let us say there are 10 or 9 enzymes involved. And we have information about 8 enzymes for this pathway, but information about one enzyme is missing. So, in vitro kinetic parameter values, which are missing, let us say we are uh, modeling the biochemical or metabolic pathway in yeast or in lactic acid bacteria, for example. There are lactic acid bacteria like lactobacillus, lactococcus, pediococcus, enterococcus, carnobacterium, leuconoxtoc, they belong to one family. If when we are <coughs> going to model a pathway in one particular bacteria, if the information about a constituent enzyme of a pathway is missing in that bacteria, we can borrow the information from other bacteria which is related to this group. So in this way, we can model a biochemical pathway. Once we develop a model, we can send or submit the same model to the database so that others are also able to use it. In that way, we are now trying to understand the in vivo behavior of a pathway in terms of the developed model from the in vitro kinetic parameter values and rate laws. So, instead of taking the pathway within a cell, initially manipulate the model to understand its behavior and then actually work with the real cells. So, this is what uh, is the uh, objective or the goal of modeling biochemical pathways or what we call metabolic pathways. Thank you. Therefore, the objectives in this module are to learn biochemical pathways and databases storing information about biochemical pathways. Then we learn biochemical pathway models and databases storing information about pathway models. Then we will download the pathway model and simulate using complex pathway simulation software commonly known as COPASI. Finally, we will learn using capacity for modeling a biochemical pathway to gain insight into biochemical processes and biochemical phenotypes such as meeting energy requirements for growth and division. Glycolysis was the first metabolic pathway discovered which is used by the cells to meet its energy requirements. Metabolic pathway represents a series of metabolites transformed from initial substrate or what we call the source metabolite to that is glucose 6-phosphate in glycolysis to the end product of the pathway, what we call generally sink metabolite, which is the pyruvate in glycolysis. Technically, 
all enzyme catalyzed reactions are reversible. However, some reactions in a pathway may be highly exothermic resulting in irreversible reactions. Two reactions in the glycolysis that is the one catalyzed by phosphofructokinase and the other catalyzed by pyruvate kinase are highly exothermic uh, liberating uh, energy around 4 kilocalories per mole and therefore they are irreversible. These two reactions make the complete glycolysis pathway as an irreversible pathway. In addition to metabolic pathways, there are pathways involving group transfer reactions among several species. For example, say that uh, there is a group of proteins, several proteins. The first protein receives a phosphoryl group from a metabolite. And then this protein transfers its phosphoryl group to the next protein. The next protein that is the second protein may transfer it to the third protein and so on. So this type of pathways are known as group transfer pathways and taken together that is metabolic pathways and uh, group transfer pathways both are called biochemical pathways. In addition, we can have cascades, signal cascades, amplification of the signal also. So they also form the part of the biochemical pathways. In any pathway, we have the source metabolite that is the first substrate and the sink metabolite that is the end product of the pathway. These two together are known as boundary metabolites. Metabolites from the second reaction to the second last reaction are called intermediate metabolites. The source, the sink and the intermediate metabolites taken together are collectively known as metabolite. The first step to describe a biochemical pathway is to identify the start reaction and the end reaction which defines the boundaries of the pathway. For example, Glycolysis shows that uh, glucose phosphate isomerase that is glucose 6 phosphate isomerase and the last reaction pyruvate kinase may be used to describe the boundaries of the glycolysis. I am not adding the hexokinase reaction in this because the glucose 6 phosphate is the actual first reaction after which the fate of the complete pathway ends with pyruvate. Otherwise, you see glucose 6-phosphate may be formed when it is imported uh, or uh, transported from the outside inside and by the hexokinase or it may also come from degradation of other metabolites to give glucose 6-phosphate or even glycogen breakdown to give glucose 1-phosphate and which is then uh, converted to glucose 6-phosphate. So, we can say that for glycolysis, it is safe to take glucose 6-phosphate isomerase as the first or starting reaction and the pyruvate kinase as the end reaction. CAG database that is Kyoto Encyclopedia of Genes and Genomes is a comprehensive resource of all known biochemical pathways. Visit CAG and search for glycolysis by entering glycolysis as the keyword. However, the better way to search is for a particular organism that is search CAG database for a particular organism. Uh, let us say that we are interested in searching glycolysis for Saccharomyces cerevisiae that is the budding yeast. To do so, click on the organism button. A new window will open as shown here in this slide. Start typing the name of the organism in the text box. As shown for input here up to only SA, we started typing SA here and automatically a list of organisms names starting with SA will be suggested. Select from the offered suggestions in the list. For the present example, select the third organism that is Saccharomyces cerevisiae and click select button. Alternatively, in the organism text box, simply enter the first alphabet of the genus that is S for Saccharomyces and two alphabets of the species that is CE for Cerevisiae. Therefore, simply enter SCE for Saccharomyces Cerevisiae 
and then enter the keyword glycolysis to click go button. This will display search results in the browser window. Click on the first map that is thumbnail image for glycolysis. This will open glycolysis pathway in Saccharomyces cerevisiae. The enzyme commission numbers on the pathway map are displayed in rectangles such as 5.3.1.9 for glucose 6-phosphate isomerase. It's shown here in a rectangle. The metabolites are displayed as small circles and they are labeled with their names. When the CAG pathway database is searched for a particular organism, then the enzyme numbers are mapped onto the known genes in the genome of the target organism. The mapping is displayed with the enzyme commission number highlighted with green background of the rectangle. This helps in understanding the biochemical processes in the target organism for the mapped genes of a pathway. The small circle for the metabolite represents that in case we hover the mouse over this small circle, then the complete name and structure of the metabolite will be displayed as shown in this slide. However, for the present, to reach the target gene entry, click on the highlighted rectangle with green background 5.3.1.9 to reach the gene on the genome. CAG mapping the enzyme to gene helps in understanding the biochemical processes in the target organism. This slide shows the mapping of glucose 6-phosphate isomerase enzyme to gene YBR196C in the genome of Saccharomyces cerevisiae. In this way, one can reach to the gene number in the genome and use the same for browsing the gene in the genome browser as I described in the module 3 molecular sequence databases. Modeling of biochemical pathways allows simulation for the manipulation of various parameters such as the concentrations of the metabolites during the time course of a biochemical pathway. The manipulation results in the prediction of the behavior of a biochemical pathway without actually working with the cell. Therefore, the predictions from a model may provide an easy way for testing the hypothesis before actually manipulating the pathways within the cells. It allows understanding and visualization of the biochemical pathway for manipulation in the desired way. With a biochemical pathway model, one can actually visualize the metabolic flux with varying initial levels of metabolize and therefore consequently one can have the levels of metabolites at different times of operation of a biochemical pathway. This is known as the time course of a behavior of a biochemical pathway. So we can have time course behavior for the complete biochemical pathway wherein the flux of the various metabolites is given uh, with respect to time. In addition, simulation also uh, helps in uh, achieving the steady state levels of various metabolites in the pathway. So once we have model of a biochemical pathway, the model can be submitted to the database and biomodels is such a repository. It is a repository of computational models of biological processes including biochemical pathways. At Biomodels database, models described in the scientific literature are manually created and enriched with cross references. As on June the 30th, 2016, more than 40% models, that is 612, taken from published literature were manually curated. The manually curated models are fully compliant with the required standard, standard which is MIRIAM, that is M-I-R-I-A-M, the minimal information required in the annotation of models. The MIRIAM standard is required for checking the behavior of the model during simulation. In addition, at Biomodels database, the dynamic behaviors are verified with computational tools such as COPACI. Further, 
873 models were awaiting manual curation. These models were published in journals of very high international impact. In addition to curated models, computationally generated models are also there which includes metabolic, non-metabolic and whole genome metabolism models. Visit biomodels at European Institute of Bioinformatics and enter glycolysis to search. The ensuing page shows the search results. The first category listed 69 models which are manually curated models. In addition, 223 non-curated models were also found. Further, two models which were under curation were also returned. The list ended with 1000 models returned from part 2 models. Part 2 models repository houses the automatically generated models using pathways in the CAG database. The current search list 69 manually curated models for the keyword glycolysis. Let us use the seventh model in this list. Click Biomodels ID for the seventh entry in the first column to download this model. This will reach download SBML page over the mouse over download SBML button. This will expand the list of available formats. Select SBML level 2 version 1 curated to download and save the model with the file name which is suggested. In this manner users can download a required model in SBML format to be used with simulation software package. Biochemical pathways model saved in SBML can be simulated using Kupasi package, run Kupasi on your computer. The default units for time seconds, for quantity millimole and for volume milliliter will be displayed. From the file menu, import the downloaded model using command import SBML and select the save file to import. This will open the model which was downloaded in the last slide. The opening working space panel displays the general information regarding units and literature for publication of the model. The units for time and volume have been changed to minute and later respectively. These units were imported with the model. This model for published paper can yeast glycolysis be understood in terms of in vitro kinetics of the constituent enzymes that is testing biochemistry. Yes, therefore this question was answered that we can model a pathway by using in vitro kinetics of the constituent enzymes. This research established therefore that the biochemical pathways can be modeled using in vitro kinetics of the constituent enzymes. In the navigation tree view on the left, expand node model then biochemical. Now select compartments node. This will display the number of compartments with associated properties. Compartments include one extracellular and one cytosolic. Select species node to display the metabolites and associated modifiers. The initial concentration of 26 species that is metabolites are displayed in the working panel. Select reactions node. This will display 17 reactions in the pathway. Select parameter overview node. This will display all the model parameters in a single window. Let us say that during time course simulation we are interested in visualization of time course levels of glucose 6-phosphate and pyruvate. To display the intermediates during time course simulation, open output specifications node in navigation tree panel and double click plots 0 node. Followed by double click new plot in the working panel area. This will open plot underscore 1 in the working panel space. You can change the name of the plot. But for the now click new curve button. This will open a dialog box. 
Now for the x axis in the left panel of dialog box, expand time node and select model time to display model time on the x axis. In the right panel under species node and then transient concentrations sub node, select glucose 6-phosphate and click pyruvate while control key is pressed. This will select both these species to be displayed on y axis in the plot. Click OK to go ahead. In the working space panel, select both the glucose 6-phosphate and while the control key pressed, click pyruvate in the list and increase the width of the curve to be plotted to 5. Now click commit button on the left bottom of the working panel. In the navigation tree, expand tasks that is tasks node and select time course. Then set the time course parameters that is duration 2 minutes and interval size 0 0.005. Now click run button in the left bottom of the working panel. This will display the time course flux of chosen metabolites for 2 minute pathway simulation. The time course for 2 minutes duration shows that the flux of these chosen metabolites glucose 6-phosphate and pyruvate changes and then achieves, achieve the steady state levels. For altering initial concentrations of species interactively, we can use sliders. Therefore, add sliders for changing or altering the initial concentrations interactively. Sliders are graphic user elements to change the initial values for modeling parameters including volume of compartments, reaction parameters, initial concentrations of the species and modeling initial time during time course simulation. Select time course node and click on show sliders button in the toolbar to open a dialog box. Click new sliders button in this dialog box. For altering initial concentrations of the species interactively, expand species node and now expand initial concentrations node. Now select metabolites for initial concentrations to be used for simulation. First select glucose 6-phosphate and then with the control key pressed, select pyruvate and click go button. This will display the time course sliders window with the selected sliders to control initial values of these metabolites. At this stage, drag the sliders. Slide the glucose 6-phosphate to maximum and pyruvate to minimum. It will update the display of time course automatically and will find that it is different from the previous time course simulation. Slide the glucose 6-phosphate to minimum and now pyruvate to maximum and we find that it is now different from the previous time course simulation. This shows that when initially pyruvate is provided to glycolytic enzymes, the pathway is reversed to synthesize glucose 6-phosphate initially and then reach the steady state level. In addition to time course simulation, the model may be used to estimate steady state levels of the metabolites in the pathway. In the navigation panel under tasks node, select steady state node and click run button. Now display the steady state levels of the metabolites by clicking on the results node. This will display the steady state level which can be compared with the initial levels. Setting the initial level of glucose 6-phosphate to 0 and pyruvate to 10 shows that the pathway has gone in the reverse direction under these conditions. It synthesizes glucose 6-phosphate to increase the level from 0 to 1.03 and utilizing pyruvate with decrease in its level from 10 to 8.52. This shows that glycolysis pathway may run in reverse direction to produce glucose 6-phosphate from pyruvate. This happens when instead of glucose 6-phosphate, some other alternative source of energy such as provided in this example that is pyruvate is made available. However, 
the flux is still in favor of the forward direction as the maximum of the pyruvate remains as unutilized pyruvate. Therefore, to synthesize glucose 6-phosphate to the fullest, we need a separate pathway. 7 out of 9 reactions of glycolysis pathway are reversible reaction under cellular conditions. There are two thermodynamically irreversible reactions catalyzed by phosphofructokinase and pyruvate kinase in the pathway. These two reactions take the glycolysis in the forward direction. Therefore, for complete utilization of pyruvate to synthesize glucose 6-phosphate, separate enzymes for irreversible reactions catalyzed by phosphofractokinase and pyruvate kinase are required. Within the cell, these two reactions are replaced with other enzyme catalyzed reaction to reverse glycolysis to synthesize glucose 6-phosphate from pyruvate. This is achieved through fructose 1,6-bisphosphatase replacing reaction catalyzed by phosphofructokinase. To replace pyruvate kinase catalyzed reaction, two separate enzymes that is pyruvate carboxylase and PEP carboxykinase are required to convert pyruvate into PEP. With these two replacements within the cells, the glycolysis pathway is reversed to synthesize glucose 6-phosphate. This is known as gluconeogenesis pathway. This results in different pathways in each direction for catabolism and anabolism of glucose 6-phosphate respectively that is glycolysis and gluconeogenesis. However, sharing reactions between pathways that is the glycolysis and gluconeogenesis is an exception in metabolism where seven enzymes are shared between these two pathways. Otherwise, there are separate metabolic pathways for the synthesis as well as breakdown of the metabolites. For example, amino acid metabolism have several pathways for each of the amino acid. Each of the amino acid is synthesized by a different pathway and broken down or metabolized or catabolized by a different pathway. So, this is an exception where seven enzymes from glycolysis and gluconeogenesis are shared and there are two reactions, one catalyzed by phosphofructokinase and other catalyzed by pyruvate kinase which are irreversible. Therefore, to reverse the glycolysis to gluconeogenesis, these two enzyme catalyzed reactions are to be replaced by those reactions which are feasible in the reverse direction. Therefore, we need to add the enzymes to replace. So, cell has done actually, so nature has done that uh, fructose 1,6-bisphosphatase has replaced phosphofructokinase and uh, pyruvate carboxylate and uh, PEP carboxykinase has replaced uh, pyruvate kinase. So, therefore, first replace phosphofructokinase reaction or add the reaction catalyzed by fructose 1,6-bisphosphatase in the same model for the glycolysis. And then you add two reactions to convert uh, pyruvate to PEP by adding two enzyme catalyzed reactions, first by pyruvate carboxylase and second by PEP carboxykinase. And these are available for Saccharomyces cerevisiae. So, what we need is now the kinetic parameters for these three enzymes. So, visit the reaction kinetics database, download the parameters and the rate loss followed by these enzymes and then add these three enzymes in the existing model of glycolysis which we have seen. So, that now we have connected glycolysis and gluconeogenesis and it will tell us the time course that when we start with the glucose 6 phosphate initially, how it the pathways are behaving to go in the forward direction for the production of pyruvate. And when the cell or the in vivo pathways are having sufficient pyruvate but not glucose 6 phosphate, how the gluconeogenesis works. So, we will see that. Therefore, visit Brenda and enzyme kinetics database for retrieving the kinetic parameter values for these enzymes. First enter fructose 1,6-bisphosphatase to search database. This search displays the available enzymes. Click 3.1.3.11 
to reach the fructose 1,6 bisphosphatase enzyme information page. Select Saccharomyces cerevisiae and click Submit button. Expand Functional Parameters node and click KM value. In addition, expand the node for 9 entries. And retrieve kinetic parameters from the literature link 715513. The table 1 in the literature link reports Km value to be 0.02 millimoles and Vmax 8.7 micromoles per minute mg protein. In capacity, open nodes model, open biochemical node and then reaction and add new reaction by double clicking new reaction row in the working panel area. Change the name of the reaction to fructose 1,6 bisphosphatase. Enter the reaction by typing the name of the substrate that is fructose 1,6 bisphosphate within double quotes. Then join second substrate that is water using a plus sign. Then enter hyphen and greater than sign to mark it as irreversible reaction. And then add the first product name that is fructose 6 phosphate within double quotes as it has space character and join second product phosphate using plus sign. If the reaction is entered correctly, the background of this text box will change to light blue, else it will be light red. And in case it is light red, then look for the possible error which occurred while entering the reaction in this text box. After the background changes to light blue, click the new rate law button. In the following working panel, enter irreversible michaelis menten law by entering the mathematical formula shown that is enter Vmax multiplied by fructose 1,6 bisphosphate within double quotes divided by the sum of Km FVP and fructose 1,6 bisphosphate within double quotes and close the Km FVP and fructose 1,6 bisphosphate within brackets. In addition, in the same working panel, change the description of fructose 1,6 bisphosphate to substrate in the description drop down list and click commit button on the bottom left of the working panel space. In the navigation tree, select fructose 1,6 bisphosphatase reaction and select rate law for fructose 1,6 bisphosphatase which we added in the rate law drop down list. Change the value of Vmax and Km FPP to 0.2 and 0.0087 by double clicking in the text boxes under the value column. These values were retrieved from the table 1 in the literature link. Now click commit button on the bottom left of the working panel space. Follow the same steps for adding other two enzymes that is pyruvate carboxylase and phosphoenal pyruvate carboxykinase reactions. Similarly, follow the same step to retrieve the kinetic parameter information from for pyruvate carboxylase and PEP carboxykinase from Brenda database and set the kinetic parameters as shown in this slide. Set the initial concentrations of new metabolites as shown. After these additions, run time course for 2 minutes and compare new time course simulation of glycolysis and gluconeogenesis with the previous one for reversed glycolysis. We can see that the time courses for both the pathways are different. Dear students, in this module, we learnt about biochemical pathways and online databases of the integrated pathways located at CAG, that is Kyoto Encyclopedia of Genes and Genomes. The biochemical pathways are expressed mathematically in the form of models. The node models are stored in the databases and we have seen the example of biomodels database and uh, from the biomodels database we uh, downloaded the glycolysis pathway uh, in SBML that is systems biology markup language which can be imported uh, directly by the simulation software in our case COPASI that is complex pathway simulation software. We had taken the time course simulation 
for the metabolites of the glycolysis pathways. And we have also seen the steady state levels of various metabolites in this pathway. The glycolysis pathways the, was then uh, integrated with gluconeogenesis pathway uh, by adding the three reactions to replace two irreversible reactions in phosphofructokinase and pyruvate kinase. So we added three reactions uh, one, uh, by replacing these two uh, irreversible re reactions so that both can work in conjunction with each other depending on the levels of the metabolites so that we are able to see the time course flux of the metabolites. Further, glucose 6-phosphate synthesized using gluconeogenesis can enter into pentose phosphate pathway. Therefore, this is uh, your task at home that uh, you try to integrate next enzyme to enter the glucose 6-phosphate into pentose uh, phosphate shunt that is glucose 6-phosphate dehydrogenase. So, in this way you can uh, convert this uh, interconnected pathways into the network of a pathways known as biochemical process for synthesis of the precursors for growth for NADPH for biosynthetic precursors pentose phosphate pathway can do that. Therefore, one can go for extending the models from one pathway connecting to the other pathway, another pathway and ultimately the objective is to model the complete cell. So, when the, once the cell is modeled, therefore the in vivo behavior can be understood in terms of in vitro kinetic parameters already developed and therefore the complete manipulation of the target cell in a desired way can be achieved. I thank you all for visiting EPG Partial.